two ordinary King James Bibles that offer an interesting look at a particular time and place. Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at these two rather ordinary looking King James Bibles. Nothing on the exterior that is of any particular interest. But there's some information inside each of them uh, that provides a interesting snapshot of where these Bibles came from, uh, the family that owned them. And that's what I would like to talk about today. Both of these are King James Bibles from the first half of the 20th century, and they are relatively cheap Bibles. We're going to look at this one first, the smaller of the two. The cover on this is some type of cardboard or paper stock with a leather-like, some type of a textile. You can see it's fraying and uh, but some kind of fibrous textile, a canvas or some sort of uh, fabric that's covering that. <clears throat> has a yap that has been bent over the years. My father found these two Bibles, presumably at the same flea market or thrift this is a King James Bible, and the only publisher information I can find is this Presbyterian Bookstore, 6th Avenue and Wood Street, Pittsburgh, made in USA. I see no other indication of who produced this Bible. Uh, at the beginning here, there's not even the epistle dedicatory that you would find in many King James Bibles. There is an inscription here, and I'm going to a little discretion in covering up some of the name. Uh, but this is was awarded to someone named Mary for perfect attendance at Polish Methodist Episcopal Sunday School, October 1932 to October 1933. And then there's a verse here, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Perfect attendance at Polish Methodist Episcopal Sunday School. <clears throat> First of all, let's just grieve for a moment at the state of current Bible manufacturing. And I'm not talking about the high-end Bibles, but I'm talking mainly about gift and award Bibles, which is presumably what this is. Note how almost completely opaque the paper is. There's no bleed through. The print is dark, even though it's small. From the beginning, you see that you have no references. There are section headings. And at the top of each page, rather than the reference in the corner, we see kind of a subject heading, which on the very first page, the uh, subject heading Worship and Murder is particularly uh, grabbing. There's not much particularly special about this Bible. This uh, presumably was in the Bible when my, my dad found it. And this Bible was uh, used by a family, and they did record births, deaths, and such like, which I'll come back to in a minute. At the end of this particular one, there are some aids that you wouldn't normally find in a gift and award Bible. They have a calendar for daily reading. This one is uh, not 
self-pronouncing, which I find easier to read when it's not, but they do have assistance with pronouncing proper nouns, names, uh, place names, and the like. In the back, there are some Bible study tips, articles, and such. Harmony of the Gospels is included, and a number of maps. There's some water damage in this particular Bible. Maps are such that you would find in many Bibles of this age. which uh, are nostalgic for me. They look like the printing on an old globe I used to have on my dresser in my bedroom as a child. Presumably this Bible was printed in the early 30s or late 20s since it was given in 1933 as an award. Um, the family surname is a Polish or Eastern European surname. <clears throat> and I was unable to find much on the Presbyterian bookstore in Pittsburgh. I don't know if it doesn't exist or if the name has changed. And if they were indeed the publisher of this, I'm assuming they would have contracted a publisher to do that for them, but they sold this under their own imprint, which is interesting and unique. Second Bible was given to a member of the same family from the same church. Somewhere around eight years later, eight to 10 years later, um, eight or nine, I guess, June 1942, presented to someone named Helen from the Polish Methodist Church. So the family was still attending that Polish Methodist Church. This is a slightly more well-appointed Bible than the previous one, which may indicate an increase in the uh, financial health of that particular congregation, I'm not sure, or just Bible publishing had advanced. This also is a King James Version. This one produced by International, the John Winston Company, Philadelphia. This one is self-pronouncing, which uh, may be helpful to some. I find it uh, interferes with my ability to read. There are center column references in this one, chapter and uh, chapter numbers at the corner to make it easy to find. Again, the paper is just wonderful. It has yellowed with age, some oxidation there, and but still, it's uh, superior to the paper used in lower end Bibles today. This one uh, also has some helps at the end. That would not ordinarily come in a gift or award Bible today, which in the 30s and 40s, there probably wasn't a full range of Bibles from cheap to uh, insanely expensive that we have in today's market. So that shouldn't be surprising. There's some interesting articles here at the end, another Harmony of the Gospels and slightly more readable maps than the previous Bible we looked at. So these were given to young ladies in a immigrant family. And because the owner of this Bible took the time to fill out some names and dates, births, marriages, and deaths, I was easily able to locate this family. Um, thank God for the internet. Uh, Ancestry.com, I could find census records from the 1940 census and find these two sisters living in Pittsburgh in an area that uh, area of Pittsburgh that's on the map now as the uh, Southside Flats, where a number of East uh, Eastern European immigrants settled, um, drawn, uh, I think, primarily for work in the uh, steel mills and such like. Um, so in the early 1900s, this family was living there and attending a Polish Methodist church, which is, is interesting. 
uh, the mother and father born at the very tail end of the 19th century, according to what I could find on Ancestry, were born in Poland, uh, but uh, apparently immigrated before the first child was born <clears throat> and likely came to Pennsylvania, not as Methodists, because Methodism really did not gain any type of foothold at all in Poland until early in the 20th century. Um, Poland, as you might expect, largely Catholic and Orthodox, uh, but there, you know, Protestants are the kind of the third largest Christian group there. Uh, but Methodism itself, again, not really having a presence in Poland until the uh, second or third decade of the 20th century. Um, so interesting that this family attended and apparently for some years uh, a Methodist church, a Polish Methodist church. Now what does that tell me about the state of the Methodist church? I guess I could say either it was already so pervasive that uh, even immigrating Poles had a place within the larger Methodist church at that time, or I guess one could argue that it was so fragmented that they had their own separate congregation. Now, there is no church that I could find currently existing in that area uh, that still uses the name Polish, uh, Methodist or otherwise. <clears throat> I apologize for the low lighting and the noises. We have a power outage and a windstorm going outside, but I wanted to record this, uh, so I'm using some natural light to do that. I like to look at the beginning of this, and it looks like something that would have been owned by a nine or ten year old girl. We have the stickers here, maybe for learning memory verses or for attendance, because she received this as a gift for perfect attendance during one year of Sunday school. If you think about a first generation immigrant from Poland, Sunday school probably formed a large part of this individual's acclamation and education in English, um, kind of a way to integrate into larger society in Pennsylvania at that time. There are no writings or anything of the sort other than some underlining and a few spots in pencil, which this is a young lady after my own heart. Also, I, for me, it's interesting, but expected that the inscription here appears to have been written with a fountain pen. So, two sisters, two Bibles, um, eight or ten years apart, uh, both received when they were eight or ten years of age. This Bible had a newspaper cutting in it, an article about some archeological finding of a possible house where Jesus lived. And an article on the back, there were some dates from the 1970s. So this Bible presumably was still in use by someone in the household uh, up until the 1970s. One wonders the circumstances whereby both of these Bibles would have shown up at the same flea market. Or at least, I wonder. So for me, again, nothing extraordinary necessarily about these Bibles. Uh, they are, of course, King James, as you would expect. There was no alternative in the 30s and 40s. The American Standard Version certainly never gained any traction in terms of popularity. Uh, but uh, with the great migration, I guess this would have been in the second wave, second large wave of migration from Poland, from East Europe to America, the very tail end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, um, when Poles began 
moving into Pennsylvania, um, all the Great Lake states, the upper Midwest, Chicago, Cleveland, uh, Buffalo. But the first polls, uh, speaking of King James, uh, the first polls came to North America in the 1600s, the beginning of the 1600s, and settled at Jamestown. They were brought along as workmen to help build the Jamestown colony. Uh, Jamestown, of course, named after King James, um, for whom we also uh, have named the authorized version of the Bible, the King James Bible. So that was an interesting uh, tie-in, I suppose. Anyway, I just uh, thought it was fascinating to do a little research since the previous owner had taken the time to fill out family names and dates. They were easy to find. It's interesting to take um, just two books and kind of trace out um, a little snapshot of the life and times of the people who owned them. So next time you're at a thrift or flea market, you find an old Bible, pick it up, take a look through it. And uh, if you're so inclined to bring it home, it's, um, each one comes with a story, not just the story of the gospel, but uh, sometimes the story of the people that held them and loved them and cherished them. And um, that's what I love so much about it. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed this look at these two. Um, not unique, but interesting nonetheless, King James Bibles. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you here again next time.